morning, everyone. It's awful when your wife is counting down on you, you know, and I heard said, you said, I've heard these preachers said their wives sit out there and, and take a watch like this and they take it off and shake it and everything else, you know. And I, you know, when a preacher takes his off, that don't mean a thing, right? Uh, but uh, it's good to see you this morning and welcome to our services. We had a little refreshing rain at a uh, little shower. Uh, looks like it's going to be about all week as we have that. But thank you for being with us. And uh, I've got several prayer concerns that I want to mention to you. Uh, remember, ladies' Bible study this coming Tuesday night at 6.30 in the Fellowship Hall. And personnel committee meeting Thursday night at 6.30. Um, meeting in Greg's Sunday school classroom across from the office in our uh, Fellowship Hall building. And next Sunday, you'll notice there's going to be a potluck luncheon. And um, you can read that here in your bulletin. And that's because somebody is just moving out on us here with a new, a new journey in his life. And Scott, I want you to come up, brother. And then uh, let me share as he's coming prayer concerns that I've got. And we're going to pray for Scott, but he wants to share with you this morning. Uh, we want to pray for Carolyn uh, Wallace. This is Gary Cole's cousin's wife. Uh, pray for Dennis Blevins. This is Cookie's brother-in-law uh, who lost his mother five weeks ago and lost his father this past week. Pray for Brother Nate. Uh, he's going to have surgery tomorrow. Um, a lady we met this week at the office named Christina, her mom, Carol. Uh, we want to pray for... Uh, Donna Martinez, uh, uh, she's, uh, Jay called me yesterday morning and said that uh, Donna had, um, uh, had contacted the COVID-19. She's out in California. She leads our youth and stuff, uh, Donna Martinez. Uh, uh, that's, I, I get that name mixed up on the last, but, um, but they took her to the hospital yesterday, and from what I understand, they brought her back home. So uh, home as to her mom's house in California. But I think they're still waiting to have the funeral service, the memorial service for her mom. And then we'll see if, if she had the COVID, she won't be coming back for a couple of weeks, I'm sure. But if she don't, I think they plan on coming back. Um, and also pray for Lori Clower's mom that was admitted into the hospital. Uh, and uh, lift her up to the Lord. Um, so anyway, do you have other requests? And then I'll, uh, Scott will come because I'll, and I'll in, include our prayer with him at that time. Do you have any other concerns, prayer concerns? Carol Plyer, okay, her, all right, any others, any others, all right, well, we all love this guy, come up here, buddy, I know it's not easy, and, uh, but anyway, uh, Scott wants to share with you, and then I want to lead a prayer with you when you finish. Okay. So I realize the main thing as I come up here is that I should have typed this in a bigger font. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to read you uh, what I've handed to Odell and to Carol today and uh, probably say a couple of personal comments, but this is just want you to know this comes from the heart and uh, it just says, Dear Orchard Crest family, for the past seven and a half years you have shown me love, grace, and support as I've ministered alongside you as your music minister. You've carried me through hard personal times and have rejoiced with me through musicals, dramas, and worship as we have worked alongside in ministry through music. However, there are two things that you have known about me throughout uh, this entire time together. One is my desire to be back in full-time ministry, and the other is my desire to be back close to home and close to family and at this point uh, at this point in my life over the past four months God has been at work in ways that I could not explain uh, to accomplish both of those things in my life 
Things have fallen into place in a way that can only be explained as being orchestrated by him and not of my own doing. And in response to his call, I have accepted the call to become associate pastor of worship and music at First Baptist Church in Monahans, Texas. For me not to accept this call would have been in direct disobedience to him and his will in my life. I want to thank you and let you know that I will miss you, your love, your laughter, and your, <clears throat> and your presence in my life. And we'll continue to pray for Orchard Crest as you minister in Springfield <clears throat> excuse me, and the surrounding areas. <clears throat> All right, brother. In light of this, uh, I'm submitting my resignation to be effective following the morning worship on August 16th of 2020. Or 20, 000, 2020, yeah. Uh, guys, just on a personal note, there's... There's no way I can express my gratitude for this church and its love to me over the last few years. The fact that you allowed me to continue uh, to lead in worship, to lead choirs, to do things after the things that went on in my life a few years ago, even, even following coming here, just says a lot about this fellowship and about you as, as a church. And... Uh, God has never stopped the call in my life, regardless of the things that have happened in my life. And, and uh, you're just a testament to what God can do uh, through his people. And I just want you to know with all my heart, I love you and thank you. Amen. Would you like to express your love to Scott this morning? Scott, if you'll remain, I want to pray with you, brother. I love you. And it says a lot about this church, their love, <laughs> as you said, and... and going to uh, the loving church as you are or love someone that goes through brokenness within their life you know I've, as your pastor experiencing that as well to come here and you all call and you was on that committee you know here you are you can get on the committee and then you run off and leave me and, uh, but uh, we're going to pray for Scott and uh, our loss is First Baptist Church Monaghan's gain and we're, we're going to be right there in your heart you'll be in ours and we wish you well and, you know, and things, and we love you from the bottom of the heart. Let's have prayer. Father, I want to thank you for Scott and for how your hand is upon him, and as you lead him forward, may he be an extension from Orchard Crest Baptist Church here. Not just that, but the fact of in your kingdom, of what you've got planned for him there at First Baptist Church, Monahans, Texas, that just bless that fellowship, and Lord, you'll yoke us together as brothers and sisters uh, in Christ and sharing uh, Scott's ministry and his life, Lord, as he brings a lot to the table. May you bless him, anoint him in a special way, and continue. We know that, Father, you'll continue to fill our needs here, and we just thank you for what you do in our lives, and be with all the prayer concerns that we've lifted up to you, Father. Bring healing to those that are sick, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Love you, brother. Hey, all right. You're up now, man. <laughs> you up though, won't it? Y'all awake now? I love this song, uh, especially after just having this time to talk to you because I know that one day again we'll meet in heaven regardless of whether we ever meet on earth. I love you guys. Let's join and stand with me if you want to and sing, when we all, when we walk with the Lord, I will trust and obey.
people said glory thank you dear brother thank you Philip Scott God bless you brother praise team couldn't be a more fitting song sung today as we look in the message at the hardest thing to do part two you have your Bibles we're going to be reading from chapter 2 of the book of Jonah. Chapter 2 of the book of Jonah. We'll start with uh, actually chapter 1, verse 17, and then go through chapter 2 as we look at it. Last Sunday, as I introduced this message to you and shared a message with you concerning the hardest thing to do was knowing God's will and doing God's will. The hardest thing to do. You've got to know it before you can do it. Amen? And I think sometimes it's a struggle. People go through struggling trying to find out what God's will is. And I think the difficulty oftentimes for us to find out what it is that God wants us to do is because we're doing too many other things. We've got our ideas and opinions or we're caught up in what we're already doing. And just a little summary of chapter 1. If you remember the, the verse 1 in chapter 1 of Jonah said, The word of the Lord came, God spake to Jonah. We don't know how he spake. And so Jonah knew, and, and then the next few verses says, that God says, Arise and go to Nineveh. So Jonah knew supposed to God Jonah knew God's will he knew what God's will was for his life but often like many of us he didn't want to do it isn't there something else Lord I could do isn't there 
Isn't it just anything, you know, just what, you know, well, I'll do it later. Have you ever found that in procrastination sometimes? You know, I need to do this, but I'm going to put it off. You know, I'm just going to move it aside here for a little bit. And then what happens is that feeling just, it just seems to go by and you don't feel the same way. Just like here a few moments as, as we sung those songs and praise and Lord, I need you and all these different, how God speaks to our hearts and, and maybe how we need to respond at that moment. What God is saying, how is it you need God? What brings you to that place of decision within your life? Well, we're going to discover it today. You already know, I'm sure. But so, Jonah, as you know, a little summary, he paid a price, went the opposite direction, went down to Joppa, caught a boat to go to Tarshish. But then in chapter 1, you'll notice, God sent a great wind. The rock really on a uh, hurricane force wind, storms, came upon them. God sent it. And they couldn't get anywhere. God sent the storm there in Jonah's life, all those that was in the boat. You know, you, you might wonder, say, well, where did this storm come from? How did it, you know, just like, just like with this pandemic of what we're facing right now, this terrible disease, whatever, the COVID-19, of thinking all those things, or any other thing. God either caused it or God allowed it. And I believe God allowed this been in our life for a reason, for a purpose. Just like with this storm that Jonah was in, and the purpose was Jonah was running from God. If we'd say anything at all, as America has got away from family values, America's got away from God, America's got away, you know, we've just simply taken God out of the equation, and I'm going to tell you, dear friend, until we get to the place to where we can cry out unto God in brokenness here in America as Americans, as individuals within the home and things, and, and we're going to begin wondering, when's this pressure going to ever ease up? God will hear our prayers, as Chronicle says, when my people that are called by my name humble themselves. They seek out God, they confess, they repent, they turn, they ask the Lord, they come in. Then God's going to bring a healing to the land. But I'm going to tell you, before the land is healed, we need the heart to be healed. That's what we need within our lives is here for God to heal our hearts. Because they become hard. And our minds are preset. So Jonah thought all was well. Jonah slept. And you'll notice that it came to the place there that as they awoke Jonah in the summary and they were saying, what's going on? They were emptying the ship of everything as because Jonah was running from God and because Jonah was running from God and he thought he was getting further and further away from God, he was resolved within his heart and complacent. And I want to tell you, there is too many that are complacent in God's will in their life of God allowing me to do this. Well, God allowed me to do it. I'm going to tell you, he'll make you wish you hadn't have done it. Finally, Jonah says, it's me. Throw me overboard. The guys didn't want to do it. In chapter 1 of Jonah. And, but yet, they resolved after they rode. They tried everything they could do. They found out, you know, we're going to have to do God's will. And all of us, because they had prayed to their gods and it didn't work. And so finally they took old Jonah up and they cast him, and that's where we left off last Sunday, is they cast him out into the sea. Overboard. They threw him over. They didn't want to. And they, they even prayed. The, the, the men who didn't know God were praying to Jonah's God, praying, don't hold this to our account, Lord. Don't hold this against us that we're, we're just doing what we know to do here. And this is what he told us to do is cast him over and the sea will come calm. The storms, because, man, they were about swamped. The ship was about to go to the bottom of the sea. They cast him over and down goes, and here we go. Down goes Jonah into the depths of the sea. Unbeknowns, in verse 17, chapter 1, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. Isn't that amazing? 
And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. When you look at that, say, God prepared. So God sent a great wind. God has spoke to Jonah. God sends a great wind. God prepares this great fish, this whale, to come along the way. I can remember, you know, I didn't have a, a Bible when I, when I surrendered to preach. I didn't, know, I didn't know the Bible. So if I didn't have a Bible, you know I didn't know the Bible. And if I didn't go to church, I couldn't learn much about the Bible. But I remember going to Bible college and uh, Clear Creek Baptist Bible College down in Pineville, Kentucky. And I remember when, and at that time, actually, it was a Clear Creek Baptist Bible School. It was called a preacher school, mountain school. They only gave out diplomas uh, when I first went there, and they became an accredited college uh, later on when I graduated from uh, the college there. And I remember an Old Testament professor that was teaching, you know, and I was looking, man, and, and the church, when I surrendered to preach, gave me a, a, a Thompson chain reference Bible and had them indexes on it because I couldn't find a thing in the Bible, you know. That'd so be like you're trying to find the book of Jonah right now, you know. So where is that? You know, it's just kind of four chapters there. And, and, and so they gave that. So I had this big old black Bible going down there. Going into Bible college, professors up there teaching, and I'm reading this, and we're into Jonah. I'd never heard this story before in my life. Here I am, 24 years old. I never heard about Jonah. I wasn't in vacation Bible school, and they talked about Jonah, or Sunday school, and they talked about and saying this thing's in church. I said, you've got to be kidding me. And said, That's amazing. You know, they say, did, did that really happen? I mean, is that really real? I don't know about that now, you know, and all this stuff. A guy live in the, you know, thing. You know, what we have in Jonah, we've got his personal testimony that he is recounting after he got out of the belly of the whale, the fish, the great fish. So we have a personal testimony here. He's saying, guys, hey, I was there. This is me. I'm the one. You know, when somebody says, this happened to me, this is my testimony to say what happened to me. And so, boy, it really, I mean, it just really fired me up. I fell in love with the Old Testament, all the different stories and things that would happen and looking at these wonderful giants like David and Goliath, you know, just hearing all those things. It was so fascinating. I was just eating the Bible up, you know, just going through, just read. I couldn't get enough of it until I got to where all them kings and numbers and stuff, and that slowed me down some. But all the, all the different things just fell in love with the inspired Word of God. God speaks to us. And He certainly spoke to my heart at that time doing it. So, so God prepares this great fish. So what did he do in preparing? He says, hey, look. He sent him. He gave him the coordinates and everything to tell him where he's going to go and all this. And God's holding them here and they can't go anywhere. And he, God knows exactly where you are. You know, sometimes you just get to the place to where you feel like you're stuck. But God may be holding you there to keep you from going forward or backwards until he's ready to turn you loose. You're not prepared yet. It's like Jesus telling the apostles to, uh, to go down to, uh, into Jerusalem and to tarry, to wait there until they're endued with power from on high in Acts chapter 1, verse 8 of the Holy Spirit so they can be witnesses unto him. But you've got to be endued with power to do that. Maybe that's why, that's why we need to come to church is so we can be endued with the power of God to make our week go further as we go out and to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need, we need that within our lives to be infused. But if you're running from God, you haven't got really to the place to where really we're looking at today of running to God. So the fish, the great fish, swallows up Jonah. Jonah is sinking to the depths down into the sea and we begin in chapter 2, verse 1. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. That means he was right there. He was, he was praying, friends, he was praying right there out of the fish of belly as, as he was in here caught up and things. Listen, verse 2. And he said, I cried by reason of my afflictions unto the Lord. Do you think he was having an easy time? No. He said, I cried out of my afflictions. I want to tell you something, dear friend. He was, he was in a great deal of misery and pain and suffering. 
Oh, his lungs could have been filled with seawater. All the, the, the seaweed was choking him, as we're reading to see here, all the different things that was wrapped around his neck, the things that happened. In fact, some say that Jonah actually died. Jonah actually died. That is what some scholars say that happened when Jonah was going. And look at it. A, let's read through it and we'll come back. I said in verse 2, I cried by reason of my infliction. So I was crying because I was afflicted. I was having trouble. And he heard me. God, he knows that. He says, and he heard me out of the belly of, what did he say here? Hell. Out of the belly of, of hell cried I. And thou heardest my voice. You ever felt like you're going through hell? You know, you ever felt like the things that's going on in your life, you think, man, I, I'm going to tell you, it just can't get any worse than this. Well, yeah, again, hell's really, hell's a terrible place. When somebody talks about, I'm going through this in my life, they're not talking about just having a picnic. They're talking about some struggles. They're talking about difficulties within their life. And this just seems like hell. Well, no, this is not quite like hell because hell is far worse than anything that you or I have ever experienced in our life and thank God if you're saved you'll never experience but he said man I cried out of the belly of hell and thou heard my voice the only reason that God heard his voice is because as he heard Jonah He's a preacher. He's, a, he's saved. He's a Christian. He's supposed to be doing God's bidding. He's, the Lord is the master. We're the servants. We're the ones who are supposed to do God's will. We're looking to seek what it is that God has for us. Verse 3, he says, For thou hast cast me into the deep. Who put him there? God put him there. Don't you ever think for one moment. You know what happens most of the time when we get flat of our backs? Where do we have to look up? Just one direction. When you get put down to the flat, on the flat of your back, dear friend, I guarantee you there's only one place to look. And that's up. If you go face down, you're in trouble. But Jonah said here in verse 3, For thou hast cast me into the deep, into the midst of the seas. The floods compassed me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Can you imagine as the tremendous tempest of that sea? He wasn't experiencing the calmness of the sea when he was thrown in. But as he was going down, the turmoil was going down with him. And up above, the sea was becoming calm. And those that had surrendered to God's will to do what God wanted experienced the calmness of the sea, and they could set sail again. When you get your life right with God, you can set sail, dear friend, and move forward because God's going to prepare a way for you, and He's going to provide for you and everything else. Do you know that? That when we do, when we get right where God wants us within our life, that God will provide and take care of us. Matthew 6, 33. Seek you the kingdom of God first and his righteousness and all these things shall be provided for you. Can you say amen? Jonah was cast down there. All the water billows coming up. Verse 4. Then said I, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look again. Look again means he looked before. I will look again toward where? Thy holy temple. Have you ever forgotten where God is? Have you ever forgotten? Do you, do you know where to look when, when you get to this point within your life? You know where to turn? Because, you know, and when you feel like God is a great ways off, it's not God that's moved, it's you. When I feel that way, it's me, it's not God. Oh, he'll stand back and he'll let us go through and he'll allow us to do. We have free will, yeah. We can do all those things. He allowed Jonah to go and Jonah had to pay the price. Many of us have been there. We've paid the price for the decisions we've made, haven't we? we we've gone through that and all the different things to, under, to come to the place of understanding. So here it is in verse 4. He said, but yet I look again toward the temple and look at verse uh, 5. The waters compass me about even to the soul. So Jonah was, I mean, he was talking about, man, he's, I mean, he was sucking in water. There was not air. That's why some people said he died. 
he died here, but when he was going down into the depths, listen to it. The death closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. That, that's not, can you visualize and think about the picture of what was going on with this guy? He's been thrown from this ship down into this tremendous water, the tempest. And I'm sure, you know what, he's probably thinking, it can't get any worse than this. You ever thought that? Man, it, can't, it just can't get any worse than this. And he's resolved, he's looking, he's praying, and he's thinking this is it, he's looking. Some people say, you know, I was a chaplain for about four, four and a half years for hospice. But more than that, as a pastor for over 40 years. And I've stood and I've sat by the bedsides of people who, who are dying. Of course, I've sat by, everybody I sit by bedside is dying, actually, because I'm sitting with a bunch of dying people here this morning. We just don't know when. <laughs> don't get scared now. It's the truth. We're all in the dying process. We're all going to die. It's appointed unto man to do what? Once to what? Hebrews 9.20. Wants to die. But I've sat there in those last moments with people who were dying. And in those moments, to be able to sit there with them, it seems like that they could see there was things, and they begin as they drifted off, that they were in another place. And for Jonah, what the place that took him when he was dying, you know where it was? The temple of God. Woo! When he came to the place of closing, here he was as he was going down in all this tempestuous. You know what he turned to? It wasn't to those great crowds. It wasn't to his popularity. It wasn't to all those different things. You know where it was? It was to God. He was toward the temple. He was looking as he was reaching out and praying that this was the thing that he was looking for and praying and trusting God with his heart. And he says, I went, verse 6, I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. That was in the very depths of the sea. The earth with her bars was about me forever. He was like he was in prison, that there it was, that there was bars. He was in a jail cell. There was no way out when you got bars to get out. There was in his struggles for life. As he was seeking down into those depths. And he says, Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. Man, you are to highlight that. You are to think about that for a moment. That in the, the depths of, of misery and troubles and trials. And when it comes to the end of the way. That when my life fainting I remember the Lord I'd like to be known to do that that's what I hope that when it comes to that end of time is that because I know when I remember the Lord I, I know that he's going to remember me God has not forsaken his children mm -mm. when Jonah says he said my prayer came in unto thee, into thy holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice, verse 9, I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Lord, I'm going to do what I promised to do going back. I, what I said, I'm going to follow you. You know, there are many people that do that. They say, Lord, I'm going to follow you. And then somewhere along the way, like Jonah, he became... He didn't go to those people. He was, he was racial, biased in his opinions of whatever. And I'm not going to Nineveh. They're our enemies. They're different kinds of people than us. And things, I'm not going there to this. They're, they're a threat to us. I'm not going. God said, go to Nineveh, everything's going good here. I'm going to stay. You know, if I can't stay here, I'm going to get away from this call. I'll get away from God. Thinking here in the temple area, you're thinking just because you leave church, you get away from God. No, you, it's not just the fact God, God is in his church, is in the house where two or three are gathered in his name. There he is in the midst. Although I have to say, I've been in some churches where I don't believe God was. Just because it's a church building doesn't mean God's there. In his presence and power of the Holy Spirit. 
Just because we have, we meet here, if we're not meeting in his name, if there isn't a true heart, because it may be some other God, little g. Maybe worshiping something else besides worshiping God. But Jonah recognized that salvation is of the Lord, and, and he came and said, I was in the presence of the Lord. I came in my spirit. I came into the temple to the place of God, cried out, and remembered his salvation. As he was crying out to the Lord, the Lord remembered him, heard him. And so in the process of that, then Jonah had this resurrection experience. So Jonah, in his prayers, was... He ran to God. And I think that the reason we have to run to God is because we know we've ran from God. You know, if you're just not right there, you know where you are in your relationship with God. You know, that's, that's a self-evaluation. Where are you? How do you feel? David in Psalm 51 would say, My sin is ever before me. Every one of us can relate to that. Because sin is what separates us from God, isn't it? Whether it's a sin of disobedience, whether it's a sin of rebellion, or whatever that sin is, or lack of faith, or, or, or if there's some other sin, of promiscuity, or whatever sin, well, it's telling a lie. You know, are hiding in some way or another to know. So that separates us from God. Jonas was, and, and that causes us to run from God, because we can't... God isn't going to bless sin. He'll bless the sinner, but he won't bless sin. So, Jonah ran to God, and this process came when he went through this prayer meeting, and he came to this conversation because of the traumatic experience he was having. It brought him through the storms to the place of recognizing that he turned his heart to God. And this is why Jesus said, like, as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, the whale, so must the Son of Man be in the belly of the earth. So he's talking about death and resurrection. So Jonah experienced a resurrection in his life. Because then if you look at that last verse in chapter 2, it says, The Lord spake this time, before it said in verse 17, chapter 1, God prepared the fish. This time it says, verse 10, and I'm sure at that preparing he spoke. It says, and the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Wow. You know, to run from God is a traumatic experience. But to surrender to him is an equally emotional decision. And I know a lot of Christians, preachers, I know a lot of people that have had to be whipped into shape. You know what I mean? And I know a lot of, a lot of all folks that comes in and sometimes it just takes it to say to come in, oh, I didn't come to, to get beat up by the preacher or to just preach on saying, listen, I want the Word of God. I want the Word of God stepping on my toes and, and reaching into the depths of my heart. I want, I want to hear God speak to me because you know why? Because I know I need it. That's why I come to church. Because I want to hear God speak. Now, whether I do what God tells me to when he speaks, that's between me and him. And I'll pay for it if I don't. Amen. I'll pay for it. I heard old, like old Brother Scott, we was talking, loving each other. And that's just, when, we live, when we hear God, when we're doing what God wants us to do. But the amazing, fascinating thing, is, and we'll start off next week with running with God is really the best. Because when Jonah ran from God, he then ran to God. In his prayer, he turned his life over to God. He just simply was just praying. It caused it, it drawed him closer to God than he'd ever been before. Now, don't get me wrong. He's still not perfect. But then, in chapter 3, you'll see the Lord's word came to him again, and the Lord's word never changed. I already told you what you need to be doing. God speaks to our hearts. 
To him that knows to do good and do it not, James 4, 17, to him it is sin. Are you listening to what God is saying in your life? Where are you? Are you running from him? Are you coming to him? Pray with me. Thank you, Father, for the blessings of your word and as you've spoken to our hearts. And we do pray, Lord, as you open our eyes and and hear our voices and we cry out, Don't, Father, don't pass us by. Lord, as we cry out unto you, draw us near to yourself today and bring healing into our hearts. And revival set us afire, our feet, that we may run for you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with me as we sing in the invitation this morning? And as God speaks to your heart, if you need to come around this altar, speak with me or whatever it is, or pray together to make a rededication of your life, to join this church, to give your heart to Christ, you know what God's saying to you. And if he's not speaking, say, Lord, speak to me as we sing. Bless me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. Someone else is making your way to come and pray. Savior, Savior, you may be saying your name. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Let me You're in the back of the church, the front, the middle. Make your way. Find a sweet relief. Kneeling there in deep contrition. Help my unbelief. Savior, Savior. Hear my humble cry. God's people said, Amen. Do we have a word from anyone before we go today? Word from anyone. Just thank the Lord for his good spirit this morning, church. Scott, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for you, my brother. And next Sunday, you know, just uh, it's another, but don't forget, don't, don't eat anything for breakfast. There'll be plenty for <laughs> lunch. We plan to have a big old lunch for you and stuff and appreciation and, and things to give you time for you want to say anything or go ahead got a song now go back to the back <laughs> let's sing together Say